As humans, we are prone to be offended by different people in our lives, in our homes, at our workplaces, by our neighbors, and even by those in church. Offenses done against us can lead us to anger, bitterness, and resentment, thereby setting an unforgiving spirit within us. God, through His Word, calls us to forgive. In the first part of this series, we explore why forgiveness is so vital to our Christian walk and understand what is the true nature of forgiveness. May this message stir our hearts to come to a place of repentance for harboring unforgiveness and also extend the mercy we have received from God for our sins to forgive others who have offended us. We will be going into our message today and um, our message may sound very familiar to you if uh, you have been in church for some time now. Uh, it's definitely not a topic that is outdated or obsolete, but it is something that speaks to us every now and then. So we know about it, uh, we say it in the Lord's Prayer, we even teach our children about it, and um, it is something that we can never hear enough of. The message title for today is The Call to Forgive. The Call to Forgive. We will be doing this in a two-part series where we'll be taking one portion of it today and the next portion in the coming week. We're always relating to someone uh, or rather on a daily basis and um, we, uh, we tend to get hurt. If I were to ask how many of us would be hurt at some point or the, t or the other, uh, all of us would probably lift our hands, you know, including mine. We've all been wronged in some way or the other. On the other hand, we've also caused hurt to somebody else, to others. And if we think we haven't, we, we deceive ourselves. So if you have come into the service today carrying the weight of an offense someone has done to you or carrying the weight of a wrong someone has done to you in probably the last week or the weeks that passed or the years behind, um, this message may be one that may be hard to hear, but it involves a stirring of our hearts and our spirits. While the message may be uncomfortable, we believe that there is good news. And what is the good news? That God wants to cleanse us. He wants to remove anything that is toxic to our spiritual health and lead us into freedom, freedom to love, freedom to live, freedom to receive from his blessings. So even as we work, we go through today's sermon, today we will be looking at um, the call to forgive and what it means to forgive. So when we look at examples around us, um, I think some of the biggest examples that we see where people feel offended are in families. You know, there are times when family feuds um, are often centered around money or when there are family members coming together for a business, you find that there may be jealousy or there is a need of control or there is a need of power. And often these things uh, tend to move legally. You know, there are cases, litigations that, that seem to, to come as a result of these kind of feuds. There's a lack of trust, there is an inability to forgive, and as a result, uh, the relationships within the family gets broken. We see um, problems even in marriages between husbands and wives when there is an inability to forgive, there is no love, there is no goodwill between the two, there is no communication. Even if there is communication, it, it's probably bitter. The words uh, are often misconstrued. Uh, the meaning of communication, meaning of messages are twisted, so much so that marriage becomes a misery and uh, there is so much of pressure within the relationship. We also see these examples even in the workplace where um, wrongs can be done and people feel bitter. They resent the employer or the employee and as a result that grows into bitterness. It begins to uh, cloud the vision and we, we begin to, uh, uh, we forget to become objective and there is negativity that comes by and as a result of which uh, there is toxicity that comes into our attitudes that makes our quality of work decrease and uh, our ability to work uh, becomes 
becomes diminished. And we see that, that the pressure rises in, in, these, in, in a workplace setting as well. Other examples of, um, you know, even if you drive a busy road or drive a busy street, like for example, in the city that we live in, uh, traffic is so high that you can so quickly feel offended. So it becomes a way of life that we, we tend to get hurt and offended in every area of our lives. Um, and to, to not miss the last, even in the body of Christ, where members hold grudges, hold um, a bitterness against another believer as they stand together in worship. So this uh, you know, it is, not, it is not surprising, no wonder that God commands us um, to forgive. God commands people to forgive because he loves us so much that he does not want us to get into the destructive path of unforgiveness. And that's why he gives you and me a call to forgive. Now, a call to forgive is hard work. Forgiveness is hard work. Now, as we look into today's portion, where we're looking into what does it mean to forgive? What does it mean to forgive? We will be looking at today's message in two parts, where first of all, we understand what makes forgiveness so important, so vital for us as believers, for our Christian work. And the next part we will look at is into the nature of true forgiveness. So even as we move on to understand what, uh, uh, why is forgiveness so vital to our Christian life, um, when we look into the Bible, we see uh, a forgiveness written very many times, both in the Old Testament as well as in the New Testament. The Old Testament, um, the word forgiveness comes from the Hebrew word called, uh, Hebrew word nasa, which means to lift up, to bear, or to dismiss or to send away. Whereas in the New Testament, there are other Greek words that are used which similarly mean the same thing. Again, to let go, or to lose, or to pardon, or to be gracious. Uh, forgiveness is, is central to our faith. It's the central doctrine of our faith. And that is why it becomes important to understand why it is so vital in our Christian life. It is something that is, uh, uh, it is inescapable and it is essential. Forgiveness is essential if we need to walk the, the life that Christ walked. So let's look at how it is, it is the most important thing. So the first thing that we understand is if we do not forgive, it affects our relationship with God. If we do not forgive, it affects our relationship with God. Unforgiveness is sin. And um, our spirits separate us from the fellowship that we have with God. As it is written in 1 John 4, 20 to 21, if someone says, I love God and hates his brother, he is a liar. For he who does not love his brother whom he has seen, how can he love God whom he has not seen? And this commandment we have from him, that he who loves God must love his brother also. So th the scripture shows that an unforgiving spirit destroys our hearts. It separates us from enjoying the benefits of our dependence on God's wisdom. And it separates us from living in the power of the Holy Spirit. It separates us from, from, living, uh, the, uh, from having the fruit of the Spirit in our lives. So we understand that it is so vital because it affects our communion, our fellowship with God. What else does, why else is it vital? Unforgiveness affects our body and our soul. When we do not forgive, our health gets affected. Uh, it makes us weak and it makes us susceptible to, to physical ailments. Often, a lot of physical disorders can be traced back to when the bitterness and to when the anger has started. So in scripture, the psalmist talks about it in Psalm 32 verse 3, where he says, When I kept silent, my bones grew old through my groaning all the day long. So he says, when I keep silent, I'm harboring something inside of me and I refuse to talk about it. And that makes my bones grow old. That makes my body grow weak. 
So we see that uh, a failure to forgive have different outcomes in our physical bodies. And there are studies that show that when we choose not to forgive, you know, the blood pressure goes up. There is a decrease in the immune responses. There are cardio cardiovascular problems that come up. Um, so some of this uh, is something that you can read up with the, the, um, the notations of it are given in, in the notes. If you're more interested, you can read as to how does uh, unforgiveness affect our physical health. Unforgiveness also affects our mind as well as our soul. And usually we see that anxiety is often driven by things that have not been settled or that have not been resolved. Again, Proverbs talks about it in Proverbs 12 verse 5. It says, anxiety in the heart of man causes depression, but a good word makes it glad. So when it affects our body and mind, it leads to a depletion of emotional energy, which thereby uh, moves into stress or moves into depression or moves into anxiety. Harboring anxiety can also um, make us poorly cope with these bitter relationships, that, that it makes us vulnerable to probably certain habits or certain patterns that soon turn into addictions. So unforgiveness can lead uh, uh, people to cope very differently, to cope in destructive measures towards their body that, that begins to make them feel anxious or make them feel depressed. So it is so vital for us to understand that it, because it affects our bodies and our minds. The next point that we understand as to why forgiveness is so vital for us, for us as Christians, is that forgiveness is the key to answered prayers. Now, prayer is a connect with God. It is a way that you and I commune. We communicate with God. We talk to him about our hurts. We talk to him about our feelings, our wrongs, our dreams, our, um, uh, our uh, concerns, our joy. And God wants to hear it all. So when we stand in a place of forgiveness, when we are forgiven in Christ, we are assured that uh, that God not only hears us, but he also answers our prayer. So Jesus said this in Mark 11, 25, 26. He said, and whenever you stand praying, if you have anything against anyone, forgive him, that your Father in heaven may also forgive you your trespasses. But if you do not forgive, neither will your Father in heaven forgive your trespasses. So what does Jesus do here? Jesus links prayer with forgiveness because forgiveness has the capacity to break the power of resentment, to break the power of bitterness, to break, to break the power of anger, which so easily dominates our hearts when we are unforgiving to others. So if we stand in unforgiveness, it renders our prayer ineffective. It renders our, our prayer uh, powerless. God will not hear our prayer when we are in a condition of sin. And this is why it is so vital for us to know what forgiveness does for our Christian work. When we move on to the next point, we find that when we do not forgive, we open the door for the attack of the enemy. When we don't forgive, we open the door for the attack of the enemy. Now, Paul addresses this in his letter to the church at Corinth. So in the church of Corinth, they caught a member who was in sin. And Paul addresses, that, addresses the church especially in this regard. So Paul, in, in those few verses, agrees that the sinner has hurt them and that they as a church have come in unified uh, in punishment, uh, in their punishment for him. But he then urges them to forgive and comfort him rather than harboring unforgiveness or harboring his wrong, because he says this opens the door for the attack of the enemy. So let's just read those verses as we understand that. In 2 Corinthians 2, verses 10 to 11, Paul writes to the church, Anyone you forgive, I also forgive. 
and what I have forgiven, if there was anything to forgive, I have forgiven in the sight of Christ for your sake, in order that Satan might not outwit us, for we are no, not, sorry, for we are not aware of his schemes. One of the avenues that uh, the enemy has access into our lives is through the door of unforgiveness. He manipulates us, he controls it, and makes it an opportunity to bring sin and stress into our lives. So you would agree that no one is worth or that important to open up the wicked schemes of the devil in our lives. So Paul encourages and he gives clarity that we should not be unaware and ignorant of what he's trying to do. So when we do not forgive, it opens the door to the attack of the enemy. The last point that I want to bring up here uh, that, that shows us it is so vital for us is that the measure we use to forgive is what God will use to forgive us. The measure of forgiveness you and I use will be the same measure that God uses to forgive us. Now that is a very sobering and uh, sobering thought. Forgiveness has always been God's idea and it, it has been his initiative. It is the heart of his gracious love. So when we look at forgiveness, uh, it, it is the outworking of God's plan to redeem and restore mankind. So he got forgiveness. He, he thought about forgiveness as a way to restore us to himself. So scripture uh, gives us this command. It says in Matthew 6, 14 and 15, For if you forgive other people when they sin against you, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if you do not forgive others their sins, your father will not forgive your sins. So there is a principle here, and it addresses the problems of an unforgiving heart. It, it just shows us that unless we realize the plight of our own slavery to sin, we do not understand the freedom that there is in forgiveness. And when we don't experience the freedom of forgiveness, we are never able to show or to give others that same, to offer that same freedom to others. So those who are honest, about their condition of sin and the forgiveness that they have received are you know, not only appreciative of God's forgiveness, but they do want to show uh, the equal amount of mercy and love towards those who, uh, who offend them. So even as we have seen through this, let's understand that the measure you and I use to forgive someone is the measure God will use for us. It is a principle that helps us in, in our understanding of the Christian walk. So even as we have um, f uh, understood of the way that forgiveness is vital to us, we move on to the next section of looking at what does it mean to truly forgive, or what is the nature of true forgiveness. Even if you look through social signs, you will find that there is a lot of thrust and attention to the signs of emotional wholeness and positive psychology. So in, in secular terms, Forgiveness is spoken about uh, vehemently, it's spoken about in therapy. But as we see in, secu in secular uh, France or in secular circles, it primarily focuses on the positive effects it has on the person who forgives. It does not pay much of attention to the relationship, but it pays a lot more attention to the forgiver and how he feels and what he needs in that situation. So studies have shown that there is a relation between forgiveness and emotional well-being, and there are some outcomes, and there are results, but it does not come with the right motivation. Whereas in the Bible, the forgiveness is taught to us by God through Christ. Forgiveness is taught to you and me by God through Christ. So our motivation to forgive comes from the way God forgives us. So the Bible shows us how. So first of all, for us to understand that, let's look at who God is. 
what are some of his attributes? The Bible tells us in Ephesians 2 verse 4, God is rich in mercy and he loved us so much. So this means that God's mercy is a sign of God's love. God's mercy is an indication of his love. And his mercy is that kind of love that, um, that loves us even when we are unlovable. You know, we would be so lost if it wasn't for the abundant mercy of the Heavenly Father. The Bible says that we are all sinful. It says we have all sinned and have fallen short of the glory of God. But because of the forgiveness that we have in Christ Jesus, we have total and complete forgiveness of our sins because of his love for us. So the mercy of God gives us not just the freedom from sin, but it also restores our relationship with him. That's how wonderful, how beautiful the mercy of God is. It again talks of, of who God is in Micah 7 verse 18. It says, who is a God like you, pardoning iniquity and passing over the transgression of the remnant of his heritage? He does not retain his anger forever because he delights in mercy. Let me repeat that last verse. It says, he delights to show us mercy, which means he is pleased, he desires, he wants to show us mercy. So when we go to him in our brokenness of sin, he is, he, he is in such joy to forgive us and to restore us back to a relationship with him. Now that is what is called delight. When, uh, when even though we are uh, filthy and sinful, God delights to show his mercy. We can never be too unclean um, uh, because the scripture says, though your sins are like scarlet, they shall be as white as snow. Though they are crimson, they shall be like wool. This is the kind of merciful forgiveness that God extends to you and me. His mercy is always in abundance. So where does our motivation to forgive come from? Our motivation to forgive must come from our response to the love and mercy of God. Our motivation to forgive must come from the response to the love and mercy of God. So the love and mercy of God is our primary motivator to forgive our brother, to forgive others. And God's mercy is the motivation for us to be able to show mercy to others. Now, in order to be merciful, we not only have to encounter God's mercy, but we also have to reflect the mercy to others. So we are in a place of encountering his mercy through the forgiveness he gives us, and thereby we reflect God's mercy to others. This is so well seen in Luke 6, 36 to 37, where it says, therefore, be merciful just as your father also is merciful. Judge not, and you shall not be judged. Condemn not, and you shall not be condemned. Forgive, and you will be forgiven. So we were saved by the biggest and greatest mercy of all, and we are called to share the same mercy. So our motivation comes from our response to the mercy of God. So the Bible tells us, and he commands us to forgive others. There is no other option to extend, the, uh, to, extend to others God's love and mercy. Colossians 3.13 says, bearing with one another and forgiving one another. If anyone has a complaint against other, even as Christ forgave you, so you also must do. So when we extend forgiveness to others, we help others see the great mercy and love of our God. So what happens when we fail to show mercy? There are repercussions uh, when we fail to show mercy. The parable of the unforgiving uh, servant is a parable that Jesus tells his disciples um, in response to Peter's question as to how many times um, should one forgive another. 
Now, Jesus gives this parable and he likens the kingdom of heaven to that of a king who was merciful to a servant who owed, who owed him a large sum of money. So the servant comes to the king and pleads him and begs him and asks him for patience till he pays it back. The king is moved with compassion, moved with mercy and cancels that entire debt. But this servant failed to understand the mercy shown to him, goes to his fellow servant and asks him to repay a debt that the fellow servant has. And he does not listen to the desperate pleas of mercy by the fellow servant. And the servant throws the fellow servant into prison until he pays back the debt. The king hearing this summons the servant and questions his unforgiving and merciless spirit. And this is what it says in Matthew 18, 33 to 34. It says, should you not also have had the compassion on your fellow servant, just as I had pity on you? And his master was angry and delivered him to the torturers until he should pay all that was due to him. What a penetrating question for, this, uh, for the servant. This was spoken to the one who would not forgive another who sinned against him, even after he received a large portion of mercy and forgiveness for his big sin or for his big debt. Jesus wants us in this parable in verse 35. So my heavenly father also will do to you if each of you from his heart does not forgive his brother his trespasses. This parable challenges us to do two things. One is to respond to the immense mercy of God the Heavenly Father by extending, uh, extending uh, mercy to others. And we see that even in one of the Beatitudes in Matthew 5, 7, it says, blessed are the merciful for they will be shown mercy. So receiving mercy comes to us when we are um, merciful. So this parable shows us that we need to respond to God's immense mercy. And it also, at the same time, reminds us that there are serious consequences um, for our failing in extending mercy. James 2.13 says, For judgment is without mercy to the one who has shown no mercy. Mercy triumphs over judgment. Now this is a wake-up call for all of us who sometimes withhold our mercy. When we fail to show mercy, we face the consequences of our own unforgiveness. Although our unforgiveness is uh, got by, by the power of the Lord Jesus, by, by what he did for us on the cross, by him taking our sins on the cross, we, what happens is we forfeit the privilege of enjoying those benefits of forgiveness because it is directly related to the way that we extend mercy. So what are those benefits? What are those blessings of being, uh, of being forgiven that we forfeit? As we had spoken earlier, we lose our fellowship with God. We, we do not have uh, prayers that are answered. We find ourselves uh, open to the attack of the enemy. We make ourselves uh, in a place where we invite physical and uh, emotional struggles. So when we do not forgive or when we do not show mercy, we face the consequences of our own unforgiveness. We also fail, face the consequences of the sins we ourselves have done. Like the unmerciful servant, like the unforgiving servant, he faced the consequences of being thrown to the torturers because he did not show mercy to his fellow servant. So the mercy that was actually due to him was withheld because of the mercy he failed to show his fellow, fellow servant. And he reaped the, the evil that he sowed upon himself. So when we do not show mercy, we take the forgiveness that we have from the Lord lightly. We do not, we take, we take it for granted. We take advantage of it because 
we tend to minimize that forgiveness. Because if we were to know the true worth of the mercy that God gives unto us, we would be appreciative and willing and uh, more than glad to show the mercy to our fellow servant. So even as we uh, we understand how forgiveness is so important for us and the mercy that we need to extend. Let's come to a place of examining ourselves. Let's come to a place of knowing what is it that God really expects of us. So unforgiveness, we need to recognize, is one of the devil's most clever and common temptations on a believer. So in order for us to keep ourselves pure, we need to walk in forgiveness and we also need to be extending mercy because then we do find mercy in judgment. So from what we have understood today, we've, we've looked at what it, means to, to, um, what it means to forgive. We understand that forgiveness is vital for our Christian life. It is, it is something that affects our relationship with God. It affects our body. It affects our spirit. It affects the way we have prayers answered. It affects um, uh, the measure that we use to forgive is, will be the measure that is given to us. And we also looked at the nature of God's forgiveness. The nature of true forgiveness is extending mercy because that is the response of God's love and God's mercy to us. Now, before we come back for a time of prayer and a time of ministry, uh, we will take some time to worship the Lord. worship team for that time of worship. Um, so we as believers know that we have the indwelling of the Holy Spirit in us. So if we are at a place where we are harboring bitterness, resentment, anger, or a grudge against someone, I pray that this message will stir you, will unsettle you, will convict you to know that, that we can have that freedom in the Lord Jesus. And I pray that you will have the freedom in Christ to be able to let go, to release, to, to forgive your brother. Because the scripture says, vengeance is mine, I will repay. You can be sure that he will settle your accounts. So let's take some time to just come to God, even with what we have heard today, to just come 
to um, to a place of receiving from him because we know unforgiveness is sin and we are called to forgive and when we do not forgive it separates us from our fellowship with god so let's join together let's come together with a repentant heart and ask the lord for forgiveness because he is more than willing to show you and me, you and me mercy let's pray heavenly father we thank you for your word we thank you god because you had it was your plan it was your initiative to bring forgiveness and forgiveness was a way to restore us to you lord even as you have forgiven us father you have called us to forgive others and there are many times father that we stay in bitterness in anger in resentment holding grudges against someone who has wronged us Father and we realize and we understand from your word that unforgiveness is sin. We understand Lord that the measure that we use to forgive others is a measure that you will use unto us. Father we know God that if we choose not to forgive Lord we lose our intimacy with you. Father and we come to you today and we come to you with repentant hearts. Father we ask you to forgive us. We have sinned in this area. We have held back mercy. We have held back forgiveness to someone who has asked us for it. Father we pray Lord that we will come boldly to your throne of grace. Lord because you you open your arms to show us mercy. We ask Lord that you take away that you release you 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 cast away our bitterness our, our anger our resentment our grudges that we hold against people lord we pray that you will consume us in such a way that you by your holy spirit you will release uh, release your power release that freedom father we want to experience that freedom of being forgiven father so that we can extend that mercy to others lord we receive we receive your power we receive your forgiveness we thank you because you stand open armed lord to to um, to extend your mercy your your delight in giving us your mercy father lord we receive it even as we receive father your forgiveness prepare our hearts to show us how we need to forgive we want to be in a place of freedom to enjoy our intimacy with you god may we be right with you first father so that we can be right with our brethren thank you for hearing our prayer we ask lord that you you grace us with your love and your mercy in jesus precious name we pray amen Thank you church for joining us today even as we prepare ourselves to uh hear the second part of the message I do invite you to come back uh so that we can uh, we can be forgiven and we can also be we can also be able to show mercy to others I pray that God blesses you and gives you a wonderful week ahead till we meet again God bless you